Good morning, I'm Renee Allen. Thanks for joining us this Sunday morning. We begin in Jennings, where police arrested a man for a homicide at a convenience store. The shooting Friday took the life of a 28-year-old man. News 10's Jasmine Dean spoke with the police chief about how they caught the suspect. I'm here at the local Sitco convenience store in Jennings, where a brawl last night ended up in a murder. Jennings police responded to a 911 call at a local convenience store Friday night. The incident took place around 7.30 p.m. when the victim and the suspect got into a fist fight that turned deadly. Captured by surveillance footage, Chief of Police Danny Sims tells News 10 that it was a way to assist in the investigation. Because it occurred in front of a convenience store, we were able to uh, get the surveillance footage from the convenience store. And as a result of that, we were able to determine that the actual shooting took place on video. The 20-year-old suspect, Tragen Kenneth Citizen of Jennings, was arrested and charged with second-degree murder. Citizen is accused of killing 28-year-old Manuel Sweet P. Provost of Jennings. Sim says that his department was assisted in locating and detaining the suspect. Through an anonymous text uh, I received on the tip line, we were able to determine that the subject was uh, in the Welsh area at a local apartment complex. Chief Sims also says that the investigation is still open and there's the possibility of obtaining warrants for individuals who could be an accessory to the crime. In Jennings, Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. A St. Landry Parish grand jury returned indictments against three people involved in the shooting deaths of a four-year-old girl and a 46-year-old man. Devon Trey, Bro, Felton Martin James, and Holly Roberts were each indicted with two counts of first-degree murder and three counts of attempted first-degree murder. The shooting happened in April on Mia Street in Opelousas. Investigators say it stemmed from an argument between Roberts and her next-door neighbor earlier that day. A four-year-old girl and 46-year-old Alton Thomas were killed. Three juveniles were also injured. In Evangeline Parish, an uptick in catalytic converter thefts and investigations by the Sheriff's Office in just the last week or so. News 10's Lee Scorville spoke to a resident who is dealing with this costly headache. Very highly upset about it because what's mine is mine. Washington tells News 10 she has owned her RV for over five years. She says she took it out Memorial Day weekend for a trip with her family, but now Fourth of July plans are on hold. Started it off Sunday, and uh, for my nephew to fix my flat tire, and he told me he said just move it up a little bit more so I could see there's a nail at the bottom. So he did. And it thought it made a lot, lot of noise. He said, well, cut it off because somebody stole your uh, Cadillac converter. Washington says she has not had any problems with the RV before now. She says she paid over $30,000 for it and it's going to cost her over $3,000 to fix it. Got an estimate, took it to the shop. It cost me like $3,795 for that. What the insurance gave me, $235. Evangeline Parish Sheriff Charles Guillory admits there was a rash of thefts a few weeks ago, but says his department worked to bring it under control. Pretty much uh, went uh, to none being stolen. But says in the last week, they are getting more calls about missing catalytic converters. And just recently, probably within the last 10 days, um, we did have about five that was stolen. So it is starting up again. That was Elisa Corville reporting there. Police are investigating a shooting that happened after a road rage incident in Shreveport. A 60-year-old man is suffering life-threatening injuries after being shot in the chest. Another 60-year-old man is said to be in custody. Police do not know where the incident began, but it ended when the drivers of the two vehicles entered a grocery store's parking lot. It's not yet clear whether the men know each other or what sparked this confrontation. Lafayette firefighters, police officers, and LCG employees will get a pay bump. That decision was made during a joint meeting of the city and parish councils last week. News 10's Rodrika Taylor was there. 
The Lafayette City and Parish Councils agreed to a 2% pay boost for police officers, firefighters, and LCG employees. This is a way to retain quality employees here in local government to make sure that we're cleaning ditches, building roads, and improving the quality of life for those that we were blessed to serve. Lafayette Parish President Josh Guillory says the increase helps benefit the public as they are now better able to retain more of their workforce. It's tough times, I know, for our economy, but I'm just so proud of our small business employers. I'm proud of our, our local entrepreneurs. He says the 2% is roughly $2 million. The sales tax revenue that's, that's uh, received from the uh, Lafayette Consolidated Government that allows us to be eligible to, to give these pay raises. Fire Chief Robert Benoit says the increase is nothing new. That's just a normal occurrence. That's something that happens every year. That's money for them to be able to feed their families and take care of their livelihoods. However, he says he is thankful. The uh, administration and the council have been generous in taking care of public safety by giving some substantial raises over the past five years to, uh, to take care of uh, our needs. Guillory says for the first time, the pay increase includes more than just police and fire. So we're able to give our police officers and our firefighters a pay raise every year that we've been in office, and this is the first year that, that I've been in office that we've been, that we've been able to extend it to other employees of, uh, of the city and parish. In Lafayette, Rodrigo Taylor, KLFY News 10. And speaking of the LPD, the crime rate in downtown Lafayette has made a noticeable rise for residents in the area, at least. Because of this, law enforcement is enacting new strategy, strategies. News 10's Dawson D'Amico tells us what's being done about that. With gun and drug related crimes continuing to occur here in downtown Lafayette, a new police precinct will be opening up very soon in the Rosa Parks building right behind me. But the Lafayette Police Department has shared other plans on how to take on the issue at hand as well. Multiple agencies in the area are taking responsibility for helping keep the activity from increasing further, like city marshals working off duty security and the sheriff's department patrolling the downtown perimeter. And so by doing that and all coming together, this is something that we're doing to try to keep that area safe during those peak hours, which is in the evening time. With these blueprints in place and the new precinct opening up very soon, downtown Lafayette has a chance to become safer for the residents looking to enjoy the festivities that are included in the area. In downtown Lafayette, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY News 10. Well, it's important that you learn how to swim for several reasons, but the message behind this next story is just much deeper than that. It's about knowing you're not too old or too young to face your fears. News 10's Danielle Johnson has a story. There's a first for everything. For Mabel Malvo, one of her first came later than she expected. I have never in my 85 years got into a pool. She says she hadn't planned on enrolling in the Destiny Swim Camp until she met the swim instructor. I say, well, ma'am, I'm 85 years old and I'm, I'm blind. And uh, how, you, how are we going to do this? I never did this before. She says, don't worry, I'll take care of you and I'll never leave you. Two weeks strong, the instructor has kept her promise. This keeps me pumped up to keep going and keep doing what we do. Mrs. Malvo enjoys the help from her instructor. However, she says she's most inspired by her junior lifeguard, Langston, who's only 10 years old. He leads me in that water, makes me walk up and down. And I thinks about what Jesus said, the child will lead you. Whenever I started lifeguarding, I was scared because the thought of having somebody's own life in my hands, I, I was like, I'm not ready for it. I understand now that if I don't help her, she won't get as much exercise as she could do, and I gain the full experience. Mrs. Malvo says she doesn't know what's next but she's ready for the journey. That's what my children said. She says, well, what's next? You're probably going to go skydiving. I said, no, that's too much. My doctors won't let me do that. In Lafayette, Danielle Johnson, KLFY News 10. And what a thoughtful young man there. A yeah. doctor in the making, right? All right, and speaking of water, we have a bunch of it coming our way. Not loads of it, but, I mean, just enough. 
Yeah, we got some rainfall coming into the forecast, and we need some of this rainfall. Let's take a look at temperatures out there for this morning. We're in the 70s and 80s in terms of Lafayette, 82 in Lafayette, now 79 in New Iberia, 77 in Lake Charles. Satellite radar shows a disturbance that's now moving into the area, and that will increase rain chances later on this afternoon. This disturbance is now working westward into the area. That creates the atmospheric lift, high pressure. Pressure is now working westward as well, so now the storms can actually begin to flourish across the area, and we'll see that this afternoon. Temperatures climbing into the mid 90s. I think the storms will come in a little later in the day, so I'm thinking that we'll have a chance to get to 96 or maybe 97, and then the storm action comes in later on this afternoon. And notice it could last through the evening hours as well. And then for tomorrow, another day of these scattered storms. 50% covered, so about four or five out of 10 people receiving that storm for today and for tomorrow. Now, temperatures once again hot, somewhere in the mid to upper 90s, just dependent on when that storm action comes in. And then for tomorrow, we definitely won't be as hot. We'll be somewhere in the lower 90s due to the increased cloud cover and rainfall. The triple digit heat and disease still in the forecast today at around 100 to 105 until about 4 or 5 p.m., and that's when we'll get get the rain cooled air thereafter. Atmospheric moisture uh, pretty high across the area now through today with that disturbance coming in. And then we have this weak front that will come in and stall right across the Gulf Coast through Monday and Tuesday. A little disturbance gets going here across the northwestern Gulf. Very low chance for some tropical development with that. Either way, we could use the rainfall across Texas and Louisiana. Nothing uh, strong that will develop across the tropics. It'll just be a rainmaker nonetheless. And I think chances of that are rather low now, but it will continue to bring the deep tropical moisture and keep the deep tropical moisture right overhead through possibly Wednesday and Thursday. So definitely unsettled this week. Tropical update, not too much going on, but we are monitoring that disturbance now across the northeastern Gulf. It will continue to slide westward towards the northwestern Gulf and then move into Texas by about Wednesday. And then across the deep tropics, we have our tropical wave. Uh, it's pretty south in latitude now, so it will be working into the extreme southeastern portions of the Caribbean and then possibly continuing to work westward towards Central America. That one has a high chance for development. It will cross the Lesser Antilles and then uh, somewhere in here, it will make landfall across Central America, so no threat to Louisiana. And then we have this uh, little disturbance that's in the Gulf that will be working off to the south and west, and that has a low chance for development through the next five days. So 96 year high today, scattered storms, hot, a light northwest wind at 2 to 8. Seven day forecast shows the high rain chances through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 50, 60 percent, most likely all the way through Friday. All right. For more information on the storage you see this morning, remember you can log on to our website. That's KLFY.com. Coming up on Paw Spot 2 this Sunday morning, we'll tell you what's being done for the day of action. Good morning, Nick Katie, and a time now is 6.13. Watch your local news wherever you go. The new KLFY app features a live local newscast with push notifications so you never miss today's news. Watch it live now.
Crime Stoppers and the Vermillion Parish Sheriff's Office would like your assistance in solving this segment's Crime of the Week. On March 13, 2014, at approximately 10.30 p.m., officers of the Abbeville Police Department responded to a 911 call at 417 Fairview Street in Abbeville. Officers located the victim, identified the 51-year-old Paul Plowden of Abbeville, laying on the ground near his vehicle. The investigation has concluded that Mr. Plowden was killed in apparent ambush when he returned home. Numerous items of evidence have been collected, and hundreds of man hours have been spent attempting to solve this homicide. The Abbeville Police Department is asking for anyone with any information to please contact Crime Stoppers. If you have information on this or any other crime, I encourage you to call the Crime Stoppers tip line at 740-TIPS or download and log on to the P3 app to report your tips anonymously, where you can earn a cash reward. From Vermillion Parish, I'm the Violent Crimes Task Force Director and Crime Stoppers Coordinator, Eddie Longlinay. Well, Acadiana, the family of a Basil man is asking for the community's help after his home burned down for the second time in two years. The fire began Thursday night and completely destroyed the home. The family of Tyrone Thomas says he works offshore and was not home when the fire happened. Though he will return to Basile next week, has nothing to come home to. Two years ago, Thomas's home across the street from where he now lives also burned down. His family is devastated and now asking for donations including clothing, shoes, and appliances to help Thomas get back on his feet. It was kind of devastating because this is the second fire that my dad had to go through, knowing that he lost his house from, a first, from the fire the first time. And the cause of that fire is still under investigation, though the Bynesville Fire Department says they believe it may have been an electrical fire. The Pine Prairie community held a benefit yesterday for a police officer fighting cancer. Pine Prairie's assistant police chief was diagnosed with throat cancer in May of last year after battling COVID-19. During his treatment, the police department, fire department, and Evangeline Parish Sheriff's Office united to host a benefit for him yesterday. His daughter says she's just overwhelmed by the community's support. He's very humble. He doesn't like to be in the spotlight. But he deserves this and so much more. And it's just, it's a great, it's overwhelming, the response that we've had. Um, he's just a great guy. He would, he would, he's always willing to lend a hand. Um, he's just an overall great guy. Over 500 lunches were sold at that benefit. St. Landry Evangelion United Ways designated Saturday as a day of service called Day of Action. The community donated school supplies along with items that will be needed during and after a disaster. And 30 community volunteers gathered at four collection sites to take donations. The United Way Board President says a day of action is a way for them to improve lives. Volunteers helped build a new home for an Army veteran and his family after a tornado destroyed his home. Here's how a group of Louisiana firefighters helped this veteran. Today starts a new chapter in our lives. Army veteran Timmy Andreessen and his family now have a new place to call home following a deadly tornado that destroyed their house in Kentucky. Four firefighters with St. Tammany Fire Protection District No. 1 volunteer with the nonprofit A Soldier's Journey Home, which helps make this rebuilding project possible. So when we get on scene, it's a very large footprint. Not only are we building a house, but we have to have a place to feed the 120 plus volunteers that show up. After three months of preparation, volunteers started with a slab of cement, and within two weeks, a brand new house was move-in ready. And uh, by the end of the process, you look around and you're like, we just did this in two weeks. Like, this is purely amazing. And there's no, uh, there's no thing you can see like that anywhere else. The firefighters say it's hard to put into words the satisfaction they receive from working together to give a veteran a new home. Mash, mash, mash. It feels great to be able to give back to people who have given so much for us over the course of their service to the country. And um, I, I can't wait to do it again next year. Coming up on Pause Spot 2, President Biden putting on the pressure for a federal gas tax holiday. We get the details for you up ahead.
Watch your local news wherever you go. The new KLFY app features a live local newscast with push notifications so you never miss today's news. Watch it live now. Welcome back. Dozens of protests are taking place around the country. That's after the Supreme Court's decision to eliminate the constitutional right to an abortion. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is warning of stepped-up threats of political violence against judges and state officials. Serena Marshall has more from outside the Supreme Court. Protesters, both for and against abortion rights, were back out in front of the Supreme Court Saturday. I choose life. What do you choose? I choose whatever I choose. Thank you. Joseph Ross demonstrated with and for his wife Jessica and their baby daughter. Because, I mean, she almost died during her pregnancy. We had so many different times where we didn't think the pregnancy was going to be viable, and that was something that we were going to have to look at. Demonstrators are taking to the streets in more than 50 cities throughout the weekend. It is about babies. It's about her rights. It's about my rights. It's about making sure that she and I have the life that we deserve to have. 26 states petitioned the court to overturn Roe. 13 already have laws on the books that would ban abortion almost immediately. The others are poised to ban or greatly restrict it. In states where abortion is still legal, they're gearing up to offer reproductive health care to an influx of people crossing state lines. And these protesters say they're ready to help. In Minnesota, Governor Tim Walz signed an executive order meant to protect Minnesota abortion services from laws in neighboring states. You've got a family member in Texas who calls and asks what you can do to help them. That phone call subjects you to Texas felony laws for aiding and abetting someone to make their own personal health care decision. We will stand for every single person to the fullest extent of the law to make sure that that never happens in Minnesota. CBS News has obtained a memo from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security warning that threats of political violence, particularly against judges and state officials, will likely intensify. Friday night in Phoenix, police fired tear gas from the windows of the Arizona Capitol building to disperse hundreds of people demonstrating outside. Some had banged on the door, sending lawmakers into the basement for 20 minutes. And in Longmont, Colorado, this still operating abortion clinic was set on fire and vandalized. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden signed the first major federal gun safety legislation passed in decades. He says the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act covers a large number of actions intended to reduce gun violence. The bill comes in the wake of a recent string of mass shootings and an increase in gun violence nationwide. It's the most significant firearms legislation to be passed in nearly 30 years. Today, we say more than enough. We say more than enough. It's time when it seems impossible to get anything done in Washington. We are doing something consequential. If we can reach compromise on guns, we ought to be able to reach compromise on other critical issues from veterans' health care to cutting-edge American innovation and so much more. I know there's much more work to do, and I'm never going to give up, 
But this is a monumental day. Then the White House is looking for ways to give Americans relief at the gas station. The national average for a gallon of regular gas is $4.96. Natalie Brand has the details on that. We can do both the President time. Biden is asking Congress to give drivers a bit of an off ramp at the pump this summer. I'm calling on Congress to suspend the federal gas tax for the next 90 days through the busy summer season. The federal gas tax is about 18 cents per gallon, meaning a savings of 270 for every 15 gallons if oil companies were to lower prices by that amount. We got to get around, we got to pay the price. Drivers say it would be better than nothing. Every bit helps, uh, but it would be nice if it was more help. But many lawmakers are already putting up a roadblock, with even Democrats divided. It's easy to take away a tax, it's hard to put one back on. Another gimmick. Uh, another band aid. President Biden also wants to see individual states implement their own gas tax holiday. Analysts say that could have a bigger impact on drivers. States generally charge more than the 18.4 cent federal tax. Patrick DeHaan with Gas Buddy cautions the tax holiday could backfire in the long run. Cutting prices risks Americans' increasing consumption which could eventually cause prices to go up down the road. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell told lawmakers Wednesday that the high energy prices are out of his control. There's a little, you know, food prices is, is a bit more mixed, but for oil prices, they're set at the global level. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm is meeting with top oil company CEOs on Thursday to urge them to boost domestic production. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Meanwhile, Friday marked one year since the daily collapse of a Florida condominium building. 98 people were killed. As Nicole Lauren reports, the cause of the collapse is still unknown and hearts are still breaking. Sorry, it's, it's, it's tough to relive this. Michael Noriega struggled revisiting the night his 92-year-old grandmother was killed, a larger-than-life person with an outsized imprint. There's just this big void of love that was just constantly poured into my heart, into my family's heart. Hilda Noriega and 97 others inside Champlain Towers South died when part of the 12-story condo collapsed in the middle of the night. We weren't looking for anything. Following the collapse, the Noriega family found precious mementos scattered in the street, this birthday card and family photos. Those items are now, they're irreplaceable treasures that are invaluable to us. Banners bearing the victims' names and ages border the site where the building once stood here on Collins Avenue. Family members are missing loved ones and answers. I'm very disappointed that we still don't know why the building fell down. Former Surfside Mayor Charles Burke had captured these images when he arrived on scene. He's frustrated with the investigation in the hands of the National Institute of Standards and Technology and not expected to conclude until 2024. We've got residents of condos all throughout Surfside and all throughout Miami that are wondering if their building's going to fall down too. Last month, Florida's governor signed a law requiring statewide recertification for condos over three stories. Critics say there aren't enough certified engineers in the state to meet that demand. A judge also approved a $1 billion settlement. There's no amount of money can, that can ever replace the lost time. Families mark this somber anniversary holding fast to memories as they still await answers. Nicole Lauren, CBS News, Surfside, Florida. In Ukraine, Russian forces seized a full control of an eastern city, once home to more than 100,000 people. The city is now a wasteland. Chris Livesay has that. Ukraine's last stronghold in this critical eastern region. Footage from these Americans volunteering with Ukrainian forces shows one of the final showdowns. The loss of Ukrainian soldiers is up to 200 per day, commanders say. The loss of buildings, like the Kharkiv regional offices in the first days of the war, almost immeasurable. Striking this building may have served no military purpose other than to terrorize civilians and show that even their most cherished buildings were no longer safe. Okay, watch your step very carefully. Kate Kublitska is an architect documenting historic sites that have been targeted, such as this medical facility. It once boasted a grand painting on the ceiling. A Russian missile dropped it to the floor. 
This is part of the paperwork that she's submitting to the International Criminal Court in The Hague because of the destruction of cultural sites like this one. Some examples are so brazen, she says, they can only be considered terrorism, such as this museum devoted to Ukrainian poet and philosopher Horhori Skovoroda. There are no other buildings around, nothing of military value, she says. More than brick and mortar, sites that define a nation, a culture, and a people fighting to survive. Chris Libsey, CBS News, Kharkiv, Ukraine. And lastly, the president is also aiming to sustain the global alliance of punishing Russia for its invasion of Ukraine. He's doing that as he embarks on a five-day trip to Europe. The president first joins a meeting of the Group of Seven in Germany, and that's before traveling to Madrid for a NATO summit. Americans wanting a big bang this 4th of July may get sticker shock. I'm Wendy Gillette. I'll explain why prices for fireworks have skyrocketed. And hot temperatures for today, but an unsettled weather pattern through the next few afternoons. Full details coming up. Download the Acadiana Eats app. It's free in the Apple app and Google Play stores. Welcome back. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s this morning. 82 in Lafayette, 79 in New Iberia, 77 in Lake Charles. Satellite radar shows a disturbance that's working into the area today, and that will increase storm chances, especially for this afternoon once that sun comes out and destabilizes the atmosphere. Temperatures rising through the 80s, climbing quickly into the mid-90s before the storm action today. 96-year high, a light northwest wind, rain chance of about 50%. Seven-day forecast shows Shows healthy rain chances continuing through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and even Thursday and Friday as well. Highs in the lower 90s. Renee, back over to you. And thank you for that, Trevor. You're seeing higher prices for just about everything these days, thanks to sky high inflation rates. This 4th of July, you can add fireworks to that list. Wendy Gillette explains why prices have gone up on us. People shopping for fireworks should expect less bang for their buck this year. Michael Vigliotti noticed the difference in prices while stocking up at Phantom Fireworks in Matamoras, Pennsylvania. Have you seen a difference in the prices this year? Yes, definitely. Everything went up, yes. Inflation is hitting consumer fireworks just as it has many other products. We had to raise our prices. Bruce Zolden is the CEO of Phantom Fireworks. Many of the items they stock come from overseas, and shipping costs have skyrocketed. 2019, we paid approximately 11000 a container, and this year, we're paying 
close to 40,000 a container. Supply chain problems started during the pandemic. Public fireworks displays were shut down, so millions of Americans bought their own for backyard celebrations. People were staying home. The entertainment for the last two years has been consumer fireworks. The huge demand led to shortages of certain fireworks at some retailers the past couple of years. Despite the higher prices, Zolden says there's more inventory this year. So while you may have to spend more, you should be able to find what you want. Grand total was $1,319.82. Cynthia Alvarez's tally was higher this year. About two to three hundred dollars more than what we've spent last year or the previous years. It's not clear if higher prices will affect overall sales. Phantom is hoping Americans' desire to celebrate sparks another big year for business. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Matamoras, Pennsylvania. Well, the warmer weather means homeowners everywhere are mowing the yard on a regular basis. But some people are trading the typical lawn for a grass that never needs to be cut. Workers rolled out the green carpet in this Los Angeles area neighborhood. The homeowner decided to rip out the old grass and replace it with artificial turf. We like real grass, but you realize how much water it takes to keep your grass green. And all of that water and the runoff and everything else is just not necessary. Many western states are in the midst of a mega drought and some cities now have major water restrictions which will likely cause many yards to turn brown. People in Denver, Colorado are also trading real grass for the synthetic kind. This job costs around $5,000. The company Perfect Turf says there is a backlog of orders from new clients. It really comes down to time, water and money. Uh, they want to save their weekends, not mowing. They want to cut back on water. Because of that, artificial grass is growing in popularity and has come a long way since AstroTurf was introduced in the 1960s. There are many types of turf available. This yard by Build Cal Turf in LA is made up of a mix of coconut fibers that make it feel almost like grass. So it mimics real grass and it also doesn't get hot. This has been in the sun on the top of the car. You can feel the turf. It's not hot. I feel like it transformed our backyard into something much more enjoyable. Kim Wynn and her husband say it took one day to install the turf in their backyard. They wanted the look and feel of grass without the maintenance. We spent all this money and time watering grass that we cut, and then we water again and we cut it. The new yard doesn't require any mowing or watering and stays green all year long. Dina Demetrius, CBS News, Los Angeles. Coming up next, a Venezuelan and Latin inspired restaurant whipping up some of their top selling dishes. That's in today's Acadiana Eats Live, y'all. Welcome back. It's time for Acadiana Eats Live. A variety of Venezuelan and Latin dishes were cooked from scratch in the Acadiana Eats kitchen. News 10's Gerald Grunig, of course, was there. 
Pata Con Latin Cuisine, joining us this morning in the Acadiana Eats Kitchen. We do everything we can to try to make sure that it is a comfortable experience for you. Open since 2015, Pata Con Latin Cuisine, cooking up delicious Venezuelan and other Latin-inspired dishes. We are a mix between Caribbean and Andean influences, things like fried plantain and also corn flour. Today in the Acadiana Eats Kitchen, the team from Pata Con serving up a handful of their top sellers. So we had our, our pork Pata Con, we have our order of tequeños, uh, uh, we had our pastelitos, we had our pavillon criollo, and lastly we had our empanadas. Patacon Latin Cuisine opens six days a week. We're open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 7, uh, Friday and Saturday, 9 to 8, and then on Sundays we're closed. In the Acadiana Eats Kitchen, I'm Gerald Grunick. Let me get a let's go. Let's go. Hello, <laughs> Moshe, Acadiana. Don't forget to watch our Acadiana Eats Kitchen segments each and every Tuesday morning on Passpot 2. Full weather details, including on the heat today and the scattered storms in the forecast through the next few days. That's coming up after the break. For most people, the word fasting brings about the notion of prolonged periods without food. But this new diet has people fasting to lose weight, improve health, live longer, boost mental clarity, and more. Here's all you need to know about this trendy fast. Intermittent fasting may be practiced in a few different ways. Alternate day fasting is just what it sounds like. On alternating days, you either feast or fast. Modified fasting, also known as 5-2 intermittent fasting, involves eating normally five days a week with food restricted to about 25% of your calorie needs on two non-consecutive days. Time-restricted fasting limits food within specific time windows. You go 12 to 16 hours restricting food. How does intermittent fasting work? Your circadian clock is actively involved in regulating your metabolism, including the appetite-regulating hormones, leptin and ghrelin. Studies have shown that eating the majority of food earlier in the day aligns more closely with our circadian rhythms. Disrupting these rhythms by eating late at night leads to a higher post-meal glucose response, prolonged insulin exposure, and great risk of type 2 diabetes and obesity. One study published in JAMA compared people who participated in alternate day fasting to those who were just on a standard reduced calorie diet found that there was no difference in weight loss over the course of one year between the two groups. What are some of the other benefits of intermittent fasting? According to Wayne B. Jonas, intermittent fasting on daytime hours optimizes and extends your body's natural cleansing process, which may have other benefits, such as improved alertness and attention, lower body-wide inflammation, a reduced risk of illness, and promoting a longer and healthier life. To optimize this process, you need at least go 10 to 12 hours without food intake, he says. What are some of the downsides of intermittent fasting? Some studies find a higher dropout rate among intermittent fasters. Plus, there may be social implications to intermittent fasting, like not being able to eat when social events are taking place. There may be medical concerns as well. In a recent year-long study by JAMA, LDL cholesterol had increased significantly after 12 months among the alternate fasting group. 
this might spell trouble for your heart. Intermittent fasting may be a viable way to jumpstart your weight loss, but before you give it a go, consult your physician, remember to eat fruits and veggies, and always keep fitness first. From the KLFY News 10 Sports Center, we are Acadiana's local sports leader. I would say lastly to the state of Louisiana, and I think you would close it out, something like this, you know. Um, thank you for giving, you know, a son of a butcher from Crowley 30 years in, in something that he loved to do. Um, thank you. Tony Robichaux is a part of Louisiana sports immortality. I'm Karaski Melvin. The late Cajun baseball coach was part of the 2022 Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame in Natchitoches. Robichaux has the most college baseball wins in Louisiana and ranks 28th all-time in NCAA Division I history. He amassed over 1,100 wins in 33 combined years of coaching the Cajuns and McNeese. His son, Cajun softball assistant coach Justin Robichaux, shares what it was like to be mentored by the now Hall of Famer and how it impacted his life and his career. That firsthand as a, as a child growing up, um, the grind, the, the, the amount of sacrifice it took, the every day just, you know, going to work every day for something that you believe in, um, to playing for him um, on the back end, getting an opportunity to be mentored by him and um, seeing the humility of servant leadership. Uh, and I think that's the, the, the biggest impact that's had in, you know, my life and, and you know, hopefully I can give that back um, to a young woman that's, that's throwing a softball. Joining Coach Robe in the Sports Hall of Fame are Saints offensive guard Jari Evans, Bills defensive tackle Kyle Williams, Pro Rodeo Hall of Famer and Opelousa native Steve Dufon, former SEC pitcher of the year Brittany Sneed Newman, national award winning gymnast, former Tiger Susan Jackson, and Baton Rouge Episcopal High School track and field cross country coach Clanny Duplachant. Former LSU lineman Eric Andelsek and 1932 Olympic welterweight gold medal boxer Dr. Eddie Flynn were also inducted posthumously. We're down to the final two teams in the men's college world series, Oklahoma and Ole Miss. Two is the number of victories one team needs to be this year's champion. Three nothing Rebs in the third. Tyler Elko gets a pitch out of the park. He's the first Ole Miss player to have two home runs in the men's college world series. Then, at the top of the eighth, Ole Miss goes back to back to back. T.J. McCants, Calvin Harris, Justin Bench would go deep. Rebels win by touchdown, 10-3. And speaking of touchdowns, the New Orleans Breakers, one game away from the USFL championship game. They took on the Birmingham Stallions in Canton, Ohio. First quarter, breaker running back Jordan Ellis gets to the outside, gets in the pay dirt for the game's first score. Second quarter, fourth down, breakers down seven. Ellis breaks a tackle and then gets touchdown number two. The ensuing Birmingham kickoff, Victor Bolden says bye-bye. It is his first kick return TD in the USFL this season, and it puts the Salians on top. They would knock out the Breakers 31-17, ending their season. And the Acadiana Cane Cutters, they keep on winning. They shut out Seguin 12-0. That is your look at sports. I'm Karaski Melvin. Now, here's the live Doppler Storm Team. Meteorologist Trevor Sonier. Thanks, Karaski. Temperatures in the 80s this morning, 82 in Lafayette, 79 in New Iberia, 77 in Lake Charles. Satellite radar shows this disturbance that's now working westward into the area, and this will increase the storm chances later on this afternoon. High pressure is still hanging on across Texas, but now that eastern end of that high pressure is starting to erode, and we're starting to see storms. To wrap around that system, and the uh, first round will be coming in later on today. We could see several rounds through the next few afternoons, but it's much needed rainfall. Temperatures rising through the 80s and getting into the mid 90s later on today. Future track shows these storms developing later on in the afternoon. We could rise into the mid 90s to get hot before the storms roll in, let's say 3, 4, 5 o'clock, and the storms could continue through the evening hours, possibly even as late as 10, 11 o'clock, showing up on this model.
tomorrow and then things quieting down overnight. We get a break and then tomorrow more of this scattered storm activity across the area. I think rain chances will be about 50% both today and also for tomorrow. So about half the area getting rainfall at some point uh, through the next uh, 24 hours or so. So temperatures in the 90s, but then the rain cooled air comes in later on in the afternoon. We could be nice and comfortable for this evening with some of that residual cloud cover and that rain cooled air across the region. And then tomorrow we do it all over again. The atmosphere recharges, but notice not as hot for tomorrow. We could be in the lower 90s versus the mid to upper 90s. So definitely feeling a little bit better on the thermometers. That's the one good thing about this, but we'll also have to deal with the rainfall. Triple digit heat indices, another possibility today. 100 to 105 mile, uh, 100 to 105 degrees, uh, so to speak, on that heat index value. So definitely hot for this time of year. Make sure you stay hydrated if you have to work outdoors. And uh, lightning's also dangerous this time of year. So if you can hear that thunder, make sure you wrap it up outdoors and get inside. Now, atmospheric moisture is high across the region through today and through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We have a front that will be coming in and stalling right across the area, and that leads to consecutive days of higher rain chances, most likely even through Thursday and Friday. So, this unsettled weather pattern will stick with us for quite some time. Satellite radar shows the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, all quiet at this time, but we are monitoring this disturbance. The same one that's giving us a rain chance today. This will slide to the west southwest and could see some tropical development across the northwestern Gulf. Very low chance for that, let's say about 20% or so. And even if it does develop, the effects will be the same, just some rainfall. And then we have another tropical wave that will be working westward. That one has a high chance for development. And then notice the one across the Gulf has a low chance for development through the next five days, mainly across the western Gulf. Whatever does develop, though, will be working into Texas, but it will swing moisture our way. So 90 Six year high today, a 50% chance for rain. Seven day forecast shows 91 for your Monday, 92 Tuesday, and we'll keep the storms in the forecast. Notice even through Thursday and Friday, rain chances remaining high. Scan this QR code to download the KLFY weather app, sponsored by Southside Roofing. In today's 90 Plus, a Bro Bridge mother takes us back in time. She remembers the days of living without electricity and without telephones. Here's Miss Maxine Broussard with a life of living off the land. That's why I have, I'm 95. Not just me. God was helping us. I think God had a plan for me. Maxine Broussard is a pleasant reminder that life is not half bad. Maxine is 95 years old. I can't do what I used to do, of course, but at least I feel good. Maxine was born in Sicilia. Her parents were farmers, and they had seven children. So when, uh, when I got married, I got married to a farmer. So. She got married when she was 15 years old. She and her husband were together 65 years before he passed away. From here to Sicilia, 
everybody had their little house mm -hmm. or big house or whatever they had and a piece of property they make their living on that. Her husband is a World War II veteran. After the war, he returned home. They started life together as sharecroppers. Now, sharecropping is when you go to work on somebody's land, you have a house, you live in the house and you, you work by the third. You, two-thirds two for you and one for the boss. Once they saved enough money, they bought a piece of land and built their family home. Maxine says farming kept the pantry stocked. Food was always at hand. And when you have to can them or put them in the freezer, you have to clean them up and pick them up and clean them up. Beans, you have to peel it. But we did it. Electricity and a telephone were not an option back then. Wash your clothes on the rubbing board and you have to all your water because you didn't have no hose and water. You didn't have no water pump, you know. Maxine says she retired from working in the field but kept picking pecans until she was well into her 80s. I would pick like a hundred pound a day. Oh, yes. Maxine and her husband had five boys. All of them are now married. I didn't have no daughters, but they are my daughters. <laughs> For Maxine, her sons will always be her boys and she will always be their mother. What more can a parent ask for? They do everything for me. Keep up, you see my yard, everything, my house. They keep up everything, but they live around, you see. I'm just, I was just blessed. Renee Allen, KLFY News 10. If you or someone you know would like to share their story on an edition of 90 Plus, go on, you can email me, rallen at kalifly.com. A group of local children participated in the Cosmo Camp last week, had a unique opportunity to launch their model rockets in Park International Friday. They were competing to see whose rocket could reach the highest height. About 15 rockets took flight that day, making for a fun summertime activity for them. Round two of Boss Squad 2, we have it for you after the break.
And now, your News 10 forecast first. Good morning, everyone. For this morning, temperatures in the upper 70s, warming up into the mid 90s this afternoon, and scattered storms will be in the forecast. Full weather details coming up in just a bit. Fox Spot 2 starts right now. Right now in Jennings, a man is in custody for a homicide at a convenience store there. And we're heading to Shreveport regarding a road rage at shooting. The alleged shooter is said to be 60 years old. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is Pass Pa 2. Good morning, Acadiana. I'm Renee Allen. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning. We begin in Jennings, where police arrested a man for a homicide at a convenience store. That shooting took place and took the life of a 28 year old man. News 10's Jasmine Dean spoke with the police chief about how they caught the suspect. I'm here at the local Sitco convenience store in Jennings where a brawl last night ended up in a murder. Jennings police responded to a 911 call at a local convenience store Friday night. The incident took place around 7.30 p.m. when the victim and the suspect got into a fist fight that turned deadly. Captured by surveillance footage, Chief of Police Danny Sims tells News 10 that it was a way to assist in the investigation. Because it occurred in front of a convenience store, we were able to uh, get the surveillance footage from the convenience store. And as a result of that, we were able to determine that the actual shooting took place on video. The 20 year old suspect, Tragen Kenneth Citizen of Jennings, was arrested and charged with second degree murder. Citizen is accused of killing 28 year old Manuel Sweet P. Provost of Jennings. Sim says that his department was assisted in locating and detaining the suspect. Through an anonymous text uh, I received on the tip line, we were able to determine that the subject was uh, in the Welsh area at a local apartment complex. Chief Sims also says that the investigation is still open and there's the possibility of obtaining warrants for individuals who could be an accessory to the crime. In Jennings, Jasmine Dean, KLFY News 10. A St. Landry Parish grand jury returned indictments against three people involved in the shooting deaths of a four-year-old girl and a 46-year-old man. Davion Andre Bro, Felton Martin James, and Holly Roberts were each indicted with two counts of first-degree murder and three counts of attempted first-degree murder. That shooting happened in April on Mia Street in Opelousas. Investigators said it stemmed from an argument between Roberts and her next-door neighbor earlier that day. A four-year-old girl and 46-year-old Alton Thomas were killed. Three, ju three juveniles were also injured in that. In Evangeline Parish, an uptick in catalytic converter thefts and investigations by the sheriff's office in just the last week or so. New City Lee Scorville spoke to a resident who is dealing with this costly headache. Very highly upset about it because what's mine is mine. Washington tells News 10 she has owned her RV for over five years. She says she took it out Memorial Day weekend for a trip with her family, but now Fourth of July plans are on hold. Started it off Sunday, and uh, for my nephew to fix my flat tire, and he told me he said just move it up a little bit more so I could see there's a nail at the bottom. So he did. And it thought it made a lot, lot of noise. He said, well, cut it off because somebody stole your uh, Cadillac converter. Washington says she has not had any problems with the RV before now. She says she paid over $30,000 for it and it's going to cost her over $3,000 to fix it. Got an estimate, took it to the shop. It cost me like $3,795 for that. What the insurance gave me, $235. Evangeline Parish Sheriff Charles Guillory admits there was a rash of thefts a few weeks ago, but says his department worked to bring it under control. Pretty much uh, went uh, to none being stolen. But says in the last week, they were getting more calls about missing catalytic converters. And just recently, probably within the last 10 days, um, we did have about five that was stolen. So it is starting up again. That was Elise Corville reporting there. Meanwhile, police are investigating a shooting that happened after a road rage incident in Shreveport. A 60 year old man is suffering life threatening injuries after being shot in the chest. Another 60 year old man is said to be in custody. 
Police don't know where the incident began, but it ended when the drivers of the two vehicles entered a grocery store's parking lot. Now, it's not clear yet whether the men knew each other or what sparked that confrontation. Lafayette firefighters, police officers, and LCG employees will get a bump in pay. That decision was made during a joint meeting of the city and parish councils last week. News 10's Rodrika Taylor was there. The Lafayette City and Parish Councils agreed to a 2% pay boost for police officers, firefighters, and LCG employees. This is a way to retain quality employees here in local government to make sure that we're cleaning ditches, building roads, and improving the quality of life for those that we were blessed to serve. Lafayette Parish President Josh Guillory says the increase helps benefit the public as they are now better able to retain more of their workforce. It's tough times, I know, for our economy, but I'm just so proud of our small business employers and proud of our, our local entrepreneurs. He says the 2% is roughly $2 million. The sales tax revenue that's, that's uh, received from the uh, Lafayette Consolidated Government that allows us to be eligible to, to give these pay raises. Fire Chief Robert Benoit says the increase is nothing new. It's just a normal occurrence. That's something that happens every year. That's money for them to be able to feed their families and take care of their livelihoods. However, he says he is thankful. The uh, administration and the council have been generous in taking care of public safety by giving some substantial raises over the past five years to, uh, to take care of our needs. Guillory says for the first time, the pay increase includes more than just police and fire. So we're able to give our police officers and our firefighters a pay raise every year that we've been in office, and this is the first year that, that I've been in office that we've, been, that we've been able to extend it to other employees of, uh, of the city and parish. In Lafayette, Rodrigo Taylor, KLFY News 10. And speaking of the LPD, the crime rate in downtown has been, has made a noticeable rise for residents in the area there. Because of this, law enforcement is enacting new strategies. News 10's Dawson D'Amico is telling us what's being done about this. With gun and drug related crimes continuing to occur here in downtown Lafayette, a new police precinct will be opening up very soon in the Rosa Parks building right behind me. But the Lafayette Police Department has shared other plans on how to take on the issue at hand as well. Multiple agencies in the area are taking responsibility for helping keep the activity from increasing further, like city marshals working off duty security and the sheriff's department patrolling the downtown perimeter. And so, by doing that and all coming together, this is something that we're doing to try to keep that area safe during those peak hours, which is in the evening time. With these blueprints in place and the new precinct opening up very soon, downtown Lafayette has a chance to become safer for the residents looking to enjoy the festivities that are included in the area. In downtown Lafayette, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY News 10. So, Acadiana, it's important you learn how to swim for several reasons, but the message behind this next story is much deeper than that. It's about knowing you're not too old or too young to face your fears. News 10 Danielle Johnson has the story. There's a first for everything. For Mabel Malvo, one of her first came later than she expected. I have never in my 85 years got into a pool. She says she hadn't planned on enrolling in the Destiny Swim Camp until she met the swim instructor. I say, well, ma'am, I'm 85 years old and I'm... I'm blind, and uh, how you how are we going to do this? I've never did this before. She says, don't worry, I'll take care of you, and I'll never leave you. Two weeks strong, the instructor has kept her promise. This keeps me pumped up to keep going and keep doing what we do. Mrs. Malvo enjoys the help from her instructor. However, she says she's most inspired by her junior lifeguard, Langston, who's only 10 years old. He leads me in that water, makes me walk up and down, and I think about what Jesus said, the child will lead you. Whenever I started lifeguarding, I was scared because the thought of having somebody's own life in my hands, I, I was like, I'm not ready for it. I understand now that if I don't help her, she won't get as much exercise as she could do, and I gain the full experience. Mrs. Malvo says she doesn't know what's next, but she's ready for the journey. That's what my children said. She says, well, what's next? She's probably going to go skydiving. I said, no, that's too much. My doctors won't let me do that. In Lafayette, Danielle Johnson, KLFY News 10. 
an amazing story right there. Trevor Sonier over in the Weather Center, and the weather is going to be a little wet for us. Yeah, it looks like some scattered storms yeah. starting today and continuing through the week ahead. A more unsettled weather pattern, but we saw hot and dry last week, yeah. so we could use some rainfall this week. Let's take a look at temperatures across the region. 82 in Lafayette, 80 in New Iberia now, 77 in Lake Charles. Satellite radar shows the clouds beginning to move in, and that's the first sign of our disturbance that will be moving in later on this afternoon. And this will increase that atmospheric lift across the region and lead to those storm chances later this afternoon. That sun comes out and destabilizes the atmosphere, and it's also helping that high pressure is pushing off to the west now, allowing for those storms to have a more favorable environment. Environment to develop. So, temperatures rising into the mid 90s later on this afternoon. I do think we get hot around 96 or so before the storm action moves in, and then we get some rain cooled air later on this afternoon and for this evening. Storms could continue late into the evening, it appears. And then for tomorrow, another round of storms across the area. I'm going about 50% coverage both today and tomorrow, so nearly half the area getting rainfall before midnight tonight and then again tomorrow. Temperatures in the 80s this morning, warming up into the mid to upper 90s, though, before that rain cooled air rushes in later on this afternoon. 70s for tonight and then for tomorrow. We rebound on the temperatures once again, but definitely not as hot as what we have been seeing. We'll favor the lower 90s tomorrow versus the mid to upper 90s. Triple digit heat indices still in the forecast. For today, 100 to 105 degrees, certainly possible, and moisture levels will be increasing. Look at all the dark green showing up across the region, and this moisture just sits overhead through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We have a front that will be working down to the south, and then we have a little low pressure that will be across the northwestern Gulf. So everything's sort of coming together to keep the rain chances high. Monday, Tuesday, and then even through Wednesday and Thursday, this moisture continues to surge back northward. Now, tropical update, we do have a few things to tell you about now. We have our disturbance that the National Hurricane Center is monitoring. This could work down to the west-southwest. It could try to develop across the northwestern Gulf by Tuesday, Wednesday. Very low chance for that to happen. Even if it does develop, it wouldn't be anything major, and rain would be the likely scenario. It would just probably be a rainmaker. And then we have our next disturbance that's moving into the Caribbean. This one has a high chance for development, so wouldn't be surprised if this one gets a name, but looks like this will stay well south of Acadiana, moving most likely into Central America. And then we have our disturbance that will be working west-southwest, and that one has the low chance for development. So 96 year high today, a 50% chance for storms. Seven-day forecast shows storm chances remaining high through the week ahead, and because of all the cloud cover and storms each day, highs will be in the lower 90s. 91 Monday, 92 on Tuesday, 90 degrees Thursday and Friday. So that's the good news in all of this. It sort of gives us a break from the heat. Yeah, and then we have that 96, and then it'll go down to 92. That's a difference yeah. right there. Yeah, and we get some much needed rainfall, so yeah. it's a win-win. That's true. Thank you, Trevor. For more on the stories you see this morning and more, remember you can log on to our website, that's Califog.com.